So this is a little preface to the video I've already filmed and edited. <clears throat> um, just want to say, uh, do apologise for some of the camera work in there. It's it's not the greatest, that's for sure. Like this shot just here, I was actually just wiping the side down. So yeah, the washer dryer is back together and working. Uh, little things as well, giving the glass a bit of a clean and stuff. Well, so it was, it turned out, I didn't even realize the time I was working on this thing and when it was finally back together and running, still had the top off, I thought I'd start tidying my tools up. Looked across to the cooker there and it turned out it was half past three in the morning somehow. So yeah, that's the thing. But there is, uh, basically I'm just filming this quick just to say that this isn't too hard of a job, it's just fiddly. So, you know, if you, if you've got a few good tools and you've got some time to do it, just don't rush it. And you, you know, you feel competent working around something like this. Then it's, it's, if it's a problem you're having, it, you really should be able to sort it all out. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video or not. That little tank thing you'll see in the video, the tank that was blocked up. The rubber seal where it goes back onto the drum was very difficult to get back on because obviously it's been heated up many times it's probably lost some of its flexibility so as much as i didn't really want to i had to put a bit of oil around it to get it to go back onto the drum and then tighten the clamp back down well i used a real light you know three in one oil something that's going to once it heats up is going to evaporate pretty quickly because don't really want a real long life oil between two seals because it's going to lubricate them and the whole point of that big rubber seal and clamp is that when you do the clamp up it can't pop off and that is quite low down on the drum so if that seal popped off the water from the wash I would say would probably if it was particularly full come out uh, to some extent you wouldn't empty the whole drum on the floor but you might get some leakage uh, something else is well, I just wanted to pick up on this video I only noticed when I've been trying to put these clips into the editor is that this camera seems to have a habit of when I hit the stop button actually deleting about the last five seconds of the footage so a lot of my sentences I finish talking press the stop button on the camera and it just seems to cut out sort of halfway through the last word in that sentence so that's not me cutting clips down too much that's this camera so anyway I've waffled on enough um yeah uh, that's it really basically so anyway uh, hope you find the video that's uh, you're about to watch useful and if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to leave them and I will try and answer them to the best of my ability if I can help you uh, but yeah anyway um, I hope this is some use to you right then something a little different today so this is my washer dryer. It's an Indeset one. It seems to be a fairly generic looking front on a lot of these Indeset machines. Anyway, it's four years old actually. It's literally a couple of days ago. It's been four years since I installed it. Well, the washing section of it's working fine. However, I, for probably about a year or so now, I've been just kind of feeling the drying section's not been working. And in the last couple of weeks yeah it's really just sort of packed in under this big cover here there's a heating element this is the fan so the hot air gets blown down there it comes back up from the back here sort of where this pipe's going now eventually it would start flashing up a fault code I could get it to do it pretty reliably by once it had done its drying cycle and not really dried the clothes trying to start another drying cycle within a few minutes it'll flash up a fault code it displays on the lights here they sort of come on in a sequence well the code was for the thermistor now this here's the thermistor if this is for just for the drying section now we'll point out there's a video online where old matey shows you how to what the thermistor is and where to get to it now he takes all these screws out here tells you to unplug all these and to then take the thermistor out there's absolutely no need to do that the thermistor literally just can be pushed in and out if it's a little bit tight just wiggle it a bit but it will just pop out and then the little that white bit is the uh, connection for it little screwdriver on the little lug and so yeah don't take these out these are there's a horrible seal under here which is really hard to put back in 
this bit is not as easy to take off as he makes it look. I had to cut the cable tie, put a new cable tie on, but I took this bit off because at the time I wanted to make sure that there wasn't a blockage or anything in here because the Mister light could mean any number of things. It doesn't just simply mean the Fermister's playing up. Now, I'm guessing because something's wrong with the drying cycle, if you turn the clothes back on warm, it's detecting something's not right and it's thinking that there's a Fermister fault because obviously warm air circulating straight away. So, changing the Fermister the other day didn't fix it. Now, I've been looking online and there's a few other people had the same issue. Basically, you'll put it on to dry, even on the long cycle, which is a timed one, and the clothes just come out hot and steaming. Uh, if you put it on the auto ones, which should sense when they're dry, it turns off pretty quick and they don't seem to dry. Now, this pipe back here is actually the cold water feed for the dryer section. From what I can understand reading online is basically it fills up a tank, cold water slowly drips down over some sort of heat exchanger or just over a panel or something, and basically the hot air is drawn back in over it, the hot moist air, hits the cold water, condenses, and then it was meant to run back down into the bottom of the drum where if you can see under there there's the pumps eventually it just runs into the pump gets pumped out so if I get my torch you can kind of see if it the uh, I'm guessing I'm washing out a bit it's all sort of black and manky looking well I'm gonna guess that's all full of crap and lime scale and that's the reason why the drying is no longer working a few other people said they've had an issue with it blocking up and not working so I'm going to I think by the looks of this this is the uh, mains input filter or something yeah if I take that off I should be able to at least take this pipe off and have a look down there and I think I'm gonna have to probably take all this lot off and actually take that tank off to pull it out so yeah anyway I have if you notice this video instead of being filmed on my phone the first one for a long time I've just brought a new laptop so I can now go and use the camera I can mount this on a tripod in a bit and I'm gonna see if it'll time lapse I don't know and yeah I can now do videos instead of shaky 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 with one hand holding a phone this is actually now a camera and I can edit them now with some proper editing software on a laptop that actually bloody works and yeah I've got a better tripod coming but I still got a little one I'm gonna mount this camera on and maybe do a little time-lapse or something so let's see what we get appliances before attempting to do any work on them so hmm what holds this all together there's only one screw in the back here Uh, looks like that all comes. Uh, there we are, upwards. So, take note of the connections. F there. One of those pesky little connectors that's probably going to be an absolute pain in the ass to get off. Small screwdriver needed. So there's a little bit at the front here that needs to come forwards. that bit needs to go backwards one of the two bear with me a moment right so that's off so now I need to get to that bit of pipe there oh man that goes grainy when I zoom in doesn't it I need to get that bit of pipe off and actually have a look down in this tank which you can see is very Oh, this torch is way too bright. Hang on, let's zoom in out. Try and soften it off a bit. Yeah, that very dirty looking tank down there. So let's get that off and have a look inside. This can't really get the grips down in there, so. when they design stuff like this the, um, the design criteria is make everything is slightly impossible to reach as can be physically achieved so so for instance you can squash this with a pair of pliers but then yeah, only lifting one side of it here we go 
Right. Once the pipe off, oh yeah, I can already see there's standing water in that tank and that should be empty. It should literally trickle dry on its own from what I can ascertain. Well, maybe it was just a bit of a... Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to check this solenoid then. If I wire the mains back up put a jug on here and put it on dry cycle. When this solenoid down there goes it should pump water through that pipe and into the jug so that's definitely worth a try. Right then, turn her on and uh, see what happens. Well, that's interesting, since I've disturbed that tank, there was definitely a lot of water in that piece of pipe it's just tried to pump out. This might take a while, I think, before this actually um, before this actually decides to pump some water through, so it usually does a little spin and a drum in both directions. Uh, I suppose I'm talking to camera now, if this takes too long I can always edit it out, can't I? So, from this point on, jump cut to hopefully water coming out of this pipe in a moment. We shall see. Jeez, come on. This is like waiting for paint to dry. Okay, I don't know where that water just went. There we go, so that's the water that should go into it. I think I'm probably going to have to turn it off because I'm going to say without the water sensor on, this is probably just going to keep filling up and up and up and up and up. So I am going to... Yes, shut you down. Okay. Right. So that solenoid is working. That's that one eliminated. Time to have a look in the tank. Figured I'd go actually take this pipe off the solenoid end and pour some water into it just to see how fast it runs away. So. Yeah, I brought a little funnel the other week when I was in Halfords and I believe I've left it at my sister's house so that would have been just perfect for this job. Can't really see anything in the tank yet. Oops, come down for the camera shall we? I can hear water trickling and um, running down in there. Let me shut the boiler off there. Nice bit of uh, old 20 year old gas boiler noise in the background. Well it seems to have happily soaked that jug up. I don't really know, I don't know where it is. I just realised that jug had milk residue in the bottom of it. I just poured some milk into my washing machine. <sighs> so is there water in here? Is that the problem? Does that fill up with water and not go anywhere? What happens if I blow into this? Seems to get... Yeah, it offers no resistance. Huh. I don't know, maybe then...
maybe the issue is just that it's so full of fluff and crap the water's running down behind all the fluff and crap and not actually into the airstream where the where the hot moist air is supposed to be getting pulled over it I'm gonna have to take that bit off so yeah let's uh, pull the solenoid this back off this is a if you've noticed, this is just a mains filter this is on the camera so there's a little toroid in there there's a some across the line caps uh, one two post filters a little resistor in there to discharge them no, uh, you'd expect it to have seen an MOV, a metal oxide varistor. Sorry, I'm probably way off shot there. I'm not used to this working in front of the camera malarkey yet. Bear with me. I'll get better. So, there's a parallel cap across the toroid. And there's two series caps across it as well. Both of them are machine side, not main side. There's no... MOV or anything main side. There might be one on the board further down in the machine, but uh, not at the mains filter. So I need to take off this bit. So that's these one, two, three. It's incredibly difficult to get one here. Four, five, six, seven screws for this plate. Because it, oh, hang on, does that actually come off? Before I take this up, that did really come off, and it was just the moulding of the drum. Unfortunately, because I'm limited at the minute, I only have this small tripod. It's like yay long, uh, so I'm actually resting it on a part of the washing machine. I really would like you up there somewhere, or up there. Uh, and looking down from above but uh, I can't do that yet so I'm afraid you're just gonna have to sit there now these screws first time I had a look under here these were an absolute bastard to get out I live in a high lime scale area like real high and just the small amount of moisture and stuff that I managed to get by it, nearly seize these solids like steel screws into some kind of alloy looking casting and um, they were seized and I mean proper seized so they took a lot of swearing and grinding of teeth and sticking the tongue out at the right angle as Dave Jones would say to get them out now I put some Teflon spray on them and they're coming out of breeze this time you'll need one of these because they're buggers to get out and you will drop them in the machine and you'll curse and swear and wonder how the hell you're going to get them out. Well, it turns out there's a big gap at the bottom machine. If you can coerce them off the side of the machine, you can get them out again. You certainly don't want them uh, in the rotational parts of the machine because that would be quite catastrophic. I don't think it would go down too well at all. So... <clears throat> So, I don't know, I'm going to keep talking now just in case I can't, but I'm hoping to bits like this in future videos, I need to pop this little wire holder out just here so I can get to this one, just here so I can get to these screws without the wire being in the way. Now, I'm hoping that I'll be able to sort of, you know, take scenes like this and just fast forward them a bit to make them a little less tedious ah oh, yeah I remember now you don't need to take that wire off anyway yeah the wires for the elements are seized on but it doesn't matter too much because the element stays behind however if you want to take that bit off I'm going to need to take them off aren't I because I'm going to need to take the element out to get to the bit underneath it if you're taking the top cover off, these two element connections don't matter, they element stays behind, so you can leave them on. Um, I can't remember what was on that. Yeah, so I'm kind of hoping I can just do a fast forward on scenes like this 
just to speed them up rather than just having me waffling all the way through them. So, a couple more screws left. I think I need the bendy thing for the other, this back screw here. You either need a very stumpy driver to get to it. There is some amount of play. Might be able to get to it actually by pushing the drum over. It's on like a, a couple of gas or oil filled struts and it's, it's suspended on springs so it does have some play in it which I didn't think of to be honest last time I did this last time I got the bendy spring attachment thing for this in to do it this actually works pretty well you can just push the drum to the side and take it out like that I believe that was one of the ones that was seized up solid and of course it's the most difficult one to get to. So, with all that lot off, it's just this front bit that holds it on and it really does not push out of the way. Old, old matey on the video reckons that will just push out of the way and you can save the cable tie. Well, I have to put the camera down to do this. Excuse me. Excellent shaky camera work. No, I cannot push that out of the way and save the cable tie like he does. And of course you really, really, really want to make sure you in no way, shape or form cut into that piece of rubber. I'll tell you why I know I can't do it, because even with that out of the way, that bit of rubber likes to grip on there hard. So, all screws out. This should hopefully, there we go. So, this bit will come off. I'm gonna to have to put the camera down because bits are stuck in it. Again, apologies for the poor angle, but I don't have a tripod big. Oh, look at that. That bastard for Mr. Y is stuck on the case still. Oh, dang it. Oh, that is a pig to get to. Actually, let me twist that case and so yeah, that needs to squash in and then push out. So that's the top bit, that's the fan. Let's have a look at the rest of the workings. So yeah, look, there's the Thermistor flucking around in the breeze. So I think I'm going to have to take this bit off now because that tank, oh, nice bit of strappage there. That tank is behind here and this looks pretty manked up with some nasty shite. So there's these bigger screws here, there's one. And look, see this seal is an absolute dog to get back in. You got the little corner bits and everything, it is an absolute dog. This time round, at least it stayed in. Oh, sorry. <sighs> My heart's off. At least it stayed in last time, it half in, half out. So at least it's mostly in here. It's just like bits around the corner. You really need to make sure you've pushed that in because uh, that's always your seal. So I'm going to have to undo these big screws. It looks like there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And hopefully the element assembly will lift off and allow me some better access to this tank bit back here. And this is where you find that if you actually know what you're doing that you don't have to take any of this off and this will probably just pop out or something. But it's one of those until you've taken it apart the first time around you can't figure these things out and you're always better off having a look than just randomly pulling hoping something will happen. Okay so that's what's underneath this bit. This is just those four big screws it lifts off so there's a small lip I, I can be able to get you in on it so there's a small lip on here and that sits down into this so yeah you need to take that out and look this is now already loose so I'm gonna say 
it needs to come out of the back of here so is that going to have a bolt in it or something you'd imagine look there's a bit there no there's no no bolt in that so does it pull out does it twist out let's uh, readjust the camera I can't really see that's in a real bad place to try and hmm I don't want to be taking this pulley off but okay there's a screw under here so the question then is how does one get to it that's the uh... yeah that's definitely a big screw on some kind of clip maybe holding it in well how do you get to it they obviously don't ever intend on that bit being taken off it's just a uh, you know, water just appears to run into it run down the back of it it is absolutely full of shit it really is so that's the question how does it oh man it's so scaled up on the top here look I don't know what this bit here is it looks like it must be a small but look this is just lime scale this look at it and that's obviously what's going on in the inside of that chamber in there but kind of looks like they never intend for you to yeah there's a screw here and it literally just points to the edge of the machine so they don't intend for you to ever take that bit off um, oh here yeah, look it's fucking blocked by my foot can you see in there I don't know if I can get you in there or not look absolutely just blocked up with bits of clove fluff and <sighs> hmm that one's going to require some thinking about off camera for a while uh, yeah how surely they surely they don't build a machine that can block up on such an easily such a narrow piece which is quite vital to the machines functioning and then not making any way so you can actually take the bloody thing off that would be a really bad design actually yeah that sounds about right if it's a really bad design you can guarantee your manufacturers come up with it if I get it off I'll be back right so again by pushing the drum I was able to actually see the end of this and it's a seven mil headed hex bolt like a screw hex hex headed screw right down there so you can get a cross head into it or I've got this bendy thing and it's allowing me to undo it so yeah that screw there's like a lip in the back of this seal and it's kind of like a clip which holds it under the drum so yeah you can see there you can get it on the camera it is turning and going in it's not particularly tight so that was for Right then, let's see if we can. Uh... Okay, it's coming loose. Come on. It's getting at least as one thing. Oh, yeah, a little water out there. Oh, mate. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> this is mank. I think I can safely say they're in lies the problem it is absolutely blocked solid with fluff and debris yeah here's that little screw look so yeah just a seven mil on there an extendy thing so i'm going to clean this out and hopefully it will be good afterwards i'm going to say it's probably looking 
Oh, and there's a bit of a fluff filter in there, so clean out of there. Bit of water on the electrics, that's always good for them. Luckily enough, they've got a uh, shield on them, so yeah, clean this out, and then next step is getting it all back together again. So this little thing comes out the back of the drum. This, these holes were blocked solid. All this crap and what's in the sink is what came out of this alone. It, uh, you can see that's the hole it came out of, which is also nice. Yeah, man, that's the kind of stuff you do not want to waste that. You just want to get yourself a couple of pieces of bread and you want to smear all this shit in it and you want to make yourself a delicious tasty sandwich and get it in you as quick as possible. Do not let this shit go to waste. It's some good quality stuff that is. Ugh. So this is what's come out of it so far. I've just got a sponge to stop it all going down. Just look at it. Wads and wads of <laughs> oh, that's my best sponge. I've got to do the washing up with that in a bit. Have it right, it'll rinse off. Seriously, just, oh, oh, mate. This is the kind of job, if you do not like getting your hands dirty, if you're incredibly germophobic or squeamish, then, look, that's why. So that's just been, I'm going to say, the water's probably been running behind this just running down into the drum and the hot air's not been going over it so I've got most of it out of here just got this bit in here so I'm like, maybe some kitchen roll or something into that I basically just kept running hot water through one end then the other so like you run it through this end it'll loosen it off run it back through and it'll chug it out but I think I've reached the limit of what I'm going to be able to do with water alone so I'm going to have to try and get the rest of that out of there but first I need to clean this crap out of the sink ah beautiful if uh, I'm gonna say, if it's the kind of job you do, do it when your missus is out. Because if she comes in and sees this shit in the sink, she's probably gonna cut your balls off. So <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> All right. So this is what it's looking like now. Uh, the last bit I was stuck in here, I found by softening it with hot water and then just, you know, like giving it one of them. It. Uh, managed to get the rest of it out so I'm just gonna get some kitchen towel on there and round in there just try and mop up the last of it Ugh. seems kind of pointless because you know if it got like that in a few years after one dry all that's probably going to be back in this little thing is back in here if you take this out there's like a little just about where my finger is that you can't really camera just won't get in there but there's a small notch on the inside of the plastic drum which lines up with a small notch on here. That's been taken out and cleaned, so this screw here I clearly loosened way too much, so I'm gonna tighten that down to near gripping on the edge of the seal, and then I put it all back together and try and dry my clothes. Watch what's going on here. Look, this was all full of fluff and lime scale, so the seal comes off, but it's almost like there's a hole under there, it's really weird. So the fact that the corresponding piece on here is like it as well. So I'm going to clean this off here so it seals back on there again. Yeah, I thought that's what that's all about. I should really stop swearing so much. But anyway, yeah, so then it's reassembly time, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Right, so I finally got the little clip back on at the back. Absolute hell of a job to do. Ended up, I didn't really want to, but I ended up having to put a little bit of three in one oil on the seal just so I could push it over because it was rubber seal on plastic. It was just too tight. Trying to get it at that angle where you can't really get to it. Difficult to do. Probably would have been easy with some new seals, but anyway, so this bit's going back on. Interestingly enough, under here where there must be like a gap or something in this, it's actually all corroded this metal way. So Anyway, just a quickie, these screws are real coarse thread. If you just try and put them in and turn them in, they're gonna try and cut a new thread. So when you put these in, you need to do is actually back them out and they'll rise and rise, and then all of a sudden you'll feel a drop as they click back into their old thread. So rather than trying to just do them in and do a new thread and fucking this up, 
back them off till they raise, drop in, then turn them in. So that's them. So yeah, now to get it all back together again quick. This memory card looks like it's not got a lot on it. So I shall just hopefully next shot it all back together. Well, there it is. Back together and running again. And first thing I know, straight away, when I changed this for Mr. the other day, I ran it with a top off. Well, you could not hear the airflow coming through this like you can now. But also the other thing, this got red hot real, real quick. And this has been running for about 10 minutes now and I can still put my hand on it. I actually put a temperature, here, a little hole there you can put a probe in. My temperature probe was basically turns on about 70 and off about 80 the element in this there's literally within 20 seconds of it running you couldn't put your hand on this i can still keep my hand on this because obviously before so the water i'm going to say the water was going down because when i tip water down it's still going in and it just seems to go into the bottom of the drum so i don't know maybe it actually just condenses in the bottom of the drum but i'm not going to say the main issue was it just could not get the air through this thing and that's why when you turned it on hot it would come with a thermistor fault because it would barely run the heater for a few seconds instantly come up that it was up to temperature and there's obviously a programming routine actually in the control board which says well there's no way it can come up to temperature that quick something's wrong so it just says thermistor it's a temperature issue because uh, it, it can't tell why it's getting too hot too quick but uh, yeah that is now you see that I'm still it's starting to get hot now but it's cool this end obviously the fans picking up the hot air yeah that was the other thing there was no temperature grain before all of this was hot well I can keep my finger on it there but it's too hot to keep my finger on there so obviously there's now airflow through here which is what it needs so the clothes are in here it had an hour and well 150 minutes so a two and a half hour drying cycle and they weren't dry They've now got 40 minutes, I'm going to see what they're like after 40 minutes. I have a funny feeling they're going to be just fine, but dear me, what a crap design that is. The filter doesn't work, at all. it needs like a, a filter you can access from the back and remove, like a pull-out canister type one for servicing. This is, this is terrible. He says, you know, bear in mind, I live on my own, I'm the only person who's used this, so it gets used, it does about two washes at the weekend, the work gear, and then the clothes I've worn through the week. So in four years one person has managed to block this up imagine how quickly this would have blocked it with a family of four or five people especially with young kids and stuff it would be absolutely useless it would be on all the time within six seven months it would be absolutely blocked solid and not working anymore so anyway problem solved uh, as always uh, thanks for watching hopefully this video has been a little bit better than the other ones on the fact I can edit it and stuff now uh, next few videos well next videos from now on I'm going to have a proper tripod be able to have two hands in the way and stuff. Um, going to invest in a better camera at some point. This is just a little Nikon Coolpix L30. Turns out it can't do. Um, oh, what's your bloody colour? I always forget. Every time I'm on camera, I always forget what it's called. The one where it takes lots of pictures. Time lapse. Time lapse. That's the one. This won't do time lapse that I'm aware of. So anyway, I've got 48 seconds left on this memory card. So I'm going to say, as always, thanks for watching and catch you next time.